System charging. Before we get into the details, let's take a look at um, proper connection and setup of our gauges. Before we do that, let's take a quick review on our refrigeration gauges just to get things clarified. Sometimes this is confusing when you are a new technician. This shows your refrigeration gauges with both of the um, valves and the refrigeration knobs on these gauges turned in the clockwise position and it's closed. You can see here everything is seated and you're ready to go. When you close these knobs in the clockwise position, it'll seat these valves. You want to do this firmly but not over tighten it. It'll it'll damage these valve seats eventually and then you'll never won't be able to tighten it tight enough to um, seal off the manifold. But this is the position that your gauges should be in when you're hooking up um, hooking them up to the uh, service ports. Let's take a look at this um, thing to remember here is the both the low and high side hoses are always a straight through connection to the gauges. You will always measure whatever pressure is on this hose in this gauge. doesn't matter whether these valves are open all the way or closed or in any position, these gauges always are connected to these hoses. Now in this instance with our gauge, uh, our valve seated closed, the, the charging hose, which is the yellow hose, um, is connected to the center part of the manifold and does not have any effect on the gauges while the valves are closed. It just sits up here and waits for you to open or close one of the two valves. So this is our uh, the way that you're going to connect up your gauges. The one thing you need to remember to do is to purge those um, to purge your gauges up here at the and purge your hoses up here at the uh, manifold your your gauges are connected to the hose by a um, flared fitting that you that you can finger tight and tighten and, and open so when you hook up your low side or the blue hose to the suction line you're going to want to have this hose connection up here uh, loosen just slightly so that when you hook this up a small amount of refrigerant will come through this line and and purge the air out of the um, the hose so as soon as you hear the pressure coming out a second or two then you're going to tighten up this this fitting right here you're going to do the same thing when you hook up your high side this needs to be a little bit loose and as soon as you start to get refrigerant purging out of the or coming out of the fitting there you know that the line has been purged and you're going to tighten that back up and then you'll do that for the third time over here um, on the yellow hose once you have your refrigerant drum hooked up and your uh, valve on the drum open so that you have some refrigerant pressure here loosen up your hose and allow some refrigerant to purge out and tighten it up and now you've purged the air out of all three of your refrigeration lines. The other part of hooking up the system is you're going to want to make sure that you have your temperature analyzer or your temperature gauge up uh, set up and you're going to have it set up so that you have the sensing bulb and the temperature probe mounted about six inches away from the condensing unit on the suction line and that is if you're measuring um, superheat. If you are measuring subcooling, you will do the gauge setup exactly the same way, except you will take this temperature probe over here and you're going to move it onto the liquid line and make sure that it's securely fastened to the liquid line. If you're using a clamp-on type um, thermocouple or temperature probe, that is usually sufficient. But if you have just an open type probe, you're going to want to insulate this temperature probe from the outside air so wrap a piece of insulation around there and, and so that it's only measuring the suction line or the liquid line temperatures. Now you're ready to charge. Hoses are purged, valves are are in the closed position, you have refrigerant sitting up up here waiting to enter the system.
So when you're ready to um, let some refrigerant charge into the system, you're going to slowly back off your uh, suction side valve. You'll, be, you'll do that by turning the knob counterclockwise. And now you've opened up the center part of this manifold to the low side. So you're going to have refrigerant coming from the jug because the pressure in the jug will normally be higher than the pressure in the on the low side of the system and it is going to go through this open valve and down into the system and now you have refrigerant charging into the low side. You are also going to see that the uh, pressure low side pressure gauge is going to increase on uh, higher than what it was reading before because you're now measure, starting to measure the pressure coming out of the refrigeration jug on this side of the system. So you're going to allow a small amount of refrigerant to enter and I will usually do this for five seconds, ten seconds or so then you're going to close this valve back down which will stop that refrigerant from entering the system and you'll see this pressure, uh, the low side pressure come back down and stabilize. You're going to want to let this stabilize for um, 10 or 15 minutes. If you don't, um, you're going to be in trouble. So charging a system takes time if you do it right. So what you'll do is you're going to allow refrigerant to enter, close the valve back down, let the system pressures stabilize, then you're going to let the system temperatures stabilize. And you'll do this um, over and over again until you hit the proper measurements according to the manufacturer. The thing is is you need to do this slow because if you don't and you put too much refrigerant in it is then it becomes a pain to get it out so it's much much easier to put it in at small doses at a time and get it right than it is to charge it up and overcharge it and then try and remove refrigerant and and get it recharged again so small steps small steps. The other thing I want you to remember is when you're charging a system and this is when the system is running on a service call not a brand new system but um, charging and a system to the proper charge is you do not ever want to open up the high side of your gauges and the reason why is the high side pressure on the system is always going to be higher than the um, jug pressure so instead of having refrigerant flow through and into the system you're going to have refrigerant being pumped through the hoses and out of the system and into the jug. Now if you're on an R410A system you're going to be over 300 psi and you don't want to start pumping 300 psi of hot um, refrigerant back into your refrigeration drum because that is a very da dangerous condition to have. So remember when you're charging your system um, you do not even touch, don't, you don't want to touch the, the high side. You're going to want to read it, but not touch it. Okay, so here is our system once again. It's all set up, ready to go. So what, we'll, what you'll do is you will back off the um, low side valve on the manifold gauges counterclockwise. That, that will allow that refrigerant to come through and then you'll charge your system step by step slowly don't overcharge it and allow the system to stabilize between each dose of refrigerant okay so that is it quick overview of how to hook gauges and temperature probes up we'll get into more details about um, charging a TXV system how to measure superheat subcooling again um, how to charge a fixed orifice and we'll get into uh, manufacturers charging charts as well.